All right. How does uh, audio sound for everyone? Good? OK, cool. I will get started in just a minute. My clock says it's 2.15, so let's get going. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming to uh, hear about using Grunt to manage Drupal build and testing tools. Um, before we get started, how many folks have uh, heard of or used Grunt before? Awesome. Um, how many of you are already using it in, in your daily kind of development workflow? Great. Cool. Um, Cool. So just to kick uh, me off and, and get us started, uh, on a count of three, can you all give me your best grunt? One, two, three. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so I'm Joe Turgeon. I'm a director of engineering at phase two. And um, yeah, I'm happy to uh, be here to talk about using uh, grunt with Drupal. And the first thing I want to address is just, you know, what is the need here? Does Drupal really need a tool for uh, helping with this? And I would say that uh, that need has emerged as um, our development practice has evolved. So, um, you know, we've probably all started in a, with a, a kind of simple um, uh, approach to installing Drupal, you know, downloading core from drupal.org, adding some custom code, and copying that up to a server. And that's perfectly fine uh, for getting a Drupal site up. Um, but uh, I'm sure, you know, many of you are using other tools as part of your workflow. You might be using DrushMake to download core and contrib, um, using tools to check your code quality, compiling SAS to CSS, uh, using behavioral testing. And so all of those uh, tools are adding complexity to our development workflow. And so I think there's uh, an opportunity to have a tool that helps bring all those together. So uh, just to break down also building and testing Drupal, um, you know, why build Drupal? Um, and I think this is really about ending an anti-pattern of mixing your custom code um, with core and contrib, which you're downloading uh, from a website, and creating a more uh, consistent way of pulling all those pieces together. Um, building also probably implies that you have something like a make file that defines the different components your project depends on. And so by having that, it gives a lot of visibility into what the project is built on, uh, what it's made up of. And going along with that, I think it uh, simplifies um, the use of external libraries and resources. So you know, we're not just pulling code from Drupal.org. We're pulling jQuery plugins um, and resources from you know, other sources. And so having something that can help pull that together um, helps with documentation and uh, developer onboarding. Um, and really, you know, at the root, this is all about enforcing uh, re reproducibility and automation of your builds, um, so that you know uh, you can be sure that it's uh, resulting in the same process, no matter who's doing it. And so, why test Drupal? Um, you know, there have been a lot of great sessions that have emphasized the need for testing, and really, uh, you know, I think. It, it, it becomes apparent that complex sites need a lot more testing and um, something that's more rigorous than kind of just test clicking around on a website. Um, you can't just find all the regression issues by kind of randomly testing stuff. It's good to have a script and um, even better to have it automated so that it doesn't take uh, human time to verify your site is still working as expected. Um, having tools that help with testing or, or code quality checks also empowers developers to build um, higher quality code and, and code that you know works and will continue working in the future. Um, it also allows you to find regressions or code style issues before you've committed your code. Um, 
you know, I think it's uh, apparent that it's easier to fix uh, problems when they're still in the hands of the original developer and they can kind of tweak things rather than having it already in the uh, code base we're sharing and then um, it potentially causing problems for others. But I think, um, you know, after you've adopted some of these tools in a more complex workflow, I think there are a couple open questions that remain. One is, how can you make sure everyone uses the same tools in the same way? And so, um, at, you know, as I've seen projects adopt some of these tools, usually you have a README file that just gets longer and longer with the steps you need to do to get uh, the site operational on your machine, um, you know, steps you're, sh you're supposed to do before you can make code into the, the repo. Um, and, you know, that can become uh, complex and uh, just a multi-step um, operation, a lot to keep track of. There's also an open question about how you can isolate and separate your custom source code from Drupal core, um, from other dependencies, and from the build output. And so this is where I think introducing a new tool, and I'm going to suggest Grunt, um, makes sense and, and can help with some of these uh, connecting pieces. So why Grunt? Um, it sounds like a lot of you have, have used it and know about it. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a simple or uh, a general um, JavaScript-based task runner. So it's, it's about running tasks, running um, you know, automatable tasks. It's written uh, in JavaScript. Um, like Drupal, it's very widely adopted. It's very flexible. Um, and there's a good community of support behind it. And it's also pretty lightweight in terms of only requiring Node.js. So there aren't a lot of uh, extra tools you have to introduce into your system to be able to take advantage of Grunt. It also uh, has a fairly straightforward approach where you write tasks in JavaScript and you write the configuration for those tasks in JSON. And so JavaScript and JSON are already kind of part of our, our Drupal world and so um, I think it's uh, you know, a fairly accessible uh, tool to get into. And it also has a very large uh, library of contributed plugins. Um, and these are things that can you know, do specific tasks for you, are out there for you to find and, and pull into your uh, system. So hopefully I've made uh, a compelling case for Grunt here. And if you haven't checked it out before, take a look at the Getting Started uh, guide on gruntjs.com. It has a simple walkthrough of um, it creating a Grunt script to uh, minify JavaScript. And it's, it's just a good way to kind of see the process of, of using it. So today I'm going to introduce um, two open source uh, tools that we've released. The first is Grunt Drupal Tasks. Um, and the idea here is to have a Grunt plugin that provides uh, a good base set of common Drupal build and testing tasks. So I think for um, this tool to be adopted and uh, you know, uh, be a good value for, for you, it, it's good to not have to start at a blank slate with Grunt, but to build off of things that uh, kind of try to capture some of the common uh, Drupal development tasks. And so this is something I started as an R&D project last uh, January. Um, around this time of last year, uh, several phase two client projects had already adopted it and started using it. We released it um, yeah, as open source uh, on GitHub in September. And uh, since then, I've talked about it uh, at Bad Camp and some other camps. And just this spring, we um, achieved kind of dual support for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, which I think is an important uh, milestone and, um, you know, will uh, allow this tool and, uh, to support Drupal 8. So a couple things about Grunt Drupal Tasks. Um, it does have some opinions about how, uh, you know, you should structure and do your work. And the idea there is to enforce a, a common practice across the team and also be able to share that uh, automation with a continuous integration environment. Um, so you know, you know, all your teammates are kind of using the tools in the same way. And you can also produce builds in an in integration environment um, that will, you know, have the same output you expect and see on your local environment. It does have a couple assumptions about what your kind of development workflow and code workflow are going to be. Uh, basically, that you uh, want to verify the quality of your custom code using linting and other uh, static quality tools. That you're going to assemble um, your core modules or 
core and uh, contrib modules and themes using something like Drush Make to pull them all together. And then you're gonna run tests on, on the site. It also introduces the concept of a project scaffold for Drupal. So um, you, know, you can imagine that if you're working on a house, say painting a house, you wanna build a scaffold around it to uh, be able to give you access to that work site, to have a place to put your tools. And in a similar way, the concept of uh, scaffolding has emerged for uh, web projects where you have um, kind of some room around what the primary code is to be able to store tools um, and uh, just have things uh, work together. Um, so this leads into um, bringing a lot of tools that we do use in our practice together. Um, and so you know, we see Grunt and, and Drupal um, uh, Grunt being able to help you use things like the hat and compass and pattern lab um, and it really helps trying to orchestrate those tools and make them work uh, together consistently. We also wanted to build it with um, some sensible defaults so that this could be used out of the box uh, but also you know aware that our assumptions might not work for everyone, and so allowing you to customize and override uh, some of the configuration. And I'll show more about that later. It also tries to manage its own dependencies. So, you know, I've talked about these other tools like Compass and Behat that um, it will help you use, and it also helps you install those and set those up so that these tools are ready to use and they're discoverable. There's one uh, tool that can kind of um, you know, lead you to the other tools. You don't need to know about all the tools individually. Um, you know, at first, um, it, it kind of brings that together and gives you a single point of access. The other open source project I'm gonna introduce is uh, something called Gadget. And um, this is uh, simply uh, just an easy way to start a Drupal project using Grunt Drupal tasks. It's a Yeoman generator, um, which is another tool in the kind of grunt uh, uh, Yeoman Bauer universe. Um, and basically, it's about setting up a, a project skeleton. So this is something you use once to set up a project. And then from then on, you can use uh, just grunt. And this is something we developed uh, recently um, just to simplify the process of setting up a project with grunt. You can do it without a uh, gadget, but um, this is a nice way into it. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So let's get started and look at what it looks like to use Grunt Drupal tasks and how you get it set up. Um, and, and just to note uh, the dependencies, before starting, you'll wanna make sure you have Node.js installed. That includes NPM, which is a, a package installer for Node. And then there are a few other tools that uh, we recommend if you wanna you know, use that kind of universe of uh, tools I mentioned before, and that includes um, having Bundler, Composer, Ruby, and Ruby Gems installed. So to get started with uh, Gadget, um, there's one command that uh, will install the Gadget generator um, on your system. It'll install it globally, so you just have to run this once uh, on your computer, and um, that installs Gadget and its dependencies. And once you have Gadget installed, uh, you can create a new Drupal project using Grunt Drupal tasks by running yo gadget. Yo is uh, kind of the common command for uh, starting a yeoman generator. And when you do that, um, when you run yo gadget, this is the output you'll see at first. Uh, a nice little ASCII art image um, welcoming you to Grunt Drupal tasks and then asking which version of Drupal core do you want to use. And this prompt interface is um, kind of the, the one of the big values of, of Yeoman, giving you the opportunity to start a project, um, specify a couple preferences about what you're trying to do with that project, and then it'll create a skeleton for you to start. Um, the first you know, prompt that we've implemented is Drupal Core. Do you want Drupal Core 8 or 7? Let's say you pick 8. It lets you know it's gonna start assembling this project for you. <clears throat> uh, the first thing it does is install the latest version of Grunt Drupal Tasks. And then it sets up a Drush make file uh, to download um, or install the, the latest release of either Drupal 7 or 8. You'll see it reports that it's creating a bunch of files. Um, it uh, installs some dependencies for that. 
and then it says it's ready uh, to run the first build of the project. So let's take a look at what Gadget created for us, which is this project scaffolder skeleton. Um, and this is assuming you've run it in an empty directory. This is what you'll see then, uh, these files uh, that have been created for you. And I'll just step through some of these. Um, there's two files that start with grunt, grunt config and grunt file. And this is a project specific script and uh, configuration. So this is where you can override and customize what grunt is gonna do. And I'll talk about that more uh, near the end. There are also a couple uh, JSON files, composer and package which define uh, dependencies for Grunt Drupal tasks. And you can also use these to include dependencies for your project. So um, you, know, you might be pulling in some P uh, PHP components. You could add those to this composer, and Grunt Drupal tasks will help install those for you. Um, it, there's also a node modules directory. And um, uh, just for, for those of you not familiar with node, um, this is just where node stores its module uh, module. So this is just dependencies for grunt Drupal tasks. Well, I think uh, kind of getting into the more interesting Drupal part of this is uh, the source directory, SRC, um, which stores all the custom Drupal code, um, Drush make file, and other components you need to build your Drupal site. And we'll look at this in more detail uh, in just a minute. And then finally, a test directory, uh, which contains a Bahat config file, um, and space for you to put Bahat test features. So if we look into the source directory, um, this is where you'll see a lot of kind of common Drupal elements, right? Um, there's a space for modules where you can put any custom modules uh, for the site. A space for profiles uh, where you can add installation profiles. A Drush make file. A sites directory that can store, you know, your single, uh, site config, uh, you know, site's default, um, or multi-site configuration. Um, a static file directory, which allows you to put any um, static file replacements. So if you want to override the default uh, robots.txt that's installed, um, maybe add a humans.txt, uh, up to you. You can place that in static, and, it, and Grunt Drupal Tasks will take care of putting that in the right place for you. And then themes, which uh, you can include any custom themes for that site. So the goal of this uh, kind of project skeleton and, and scaffold, again, is to um, accommodate all the custom code, make files, site setting files, um, and tools that you have, but also isolate them from Drupal core and contrib. And this allows you to uh, you know, allow tools to work together with minimal glue um, you know, one of the reasons you want to isolate your custom code is you can run code quality checks just on that. You don't necessarily want to know, you know, how, um, uh, you know, how good the, the code quality of, of uh, Drupal core is. You want to kind of focus on your custom code, um, which is, you know, what you're working on. And by having a, a structure that kind of accommodates all the different components you might need for a Drupal site, we can standardize on this as our uh, basic uh, project code base structure. And this can be what you then check in um, to your uh, Git repo or other uh, version control system. So I'll move into the build process, which is really um, at the heart of Grunt Drupal tasks. And once you have this uh, project skeleton set up, you can use Grunt to build the project just by running Grunt. And that invokes a series of build steps, which includes running a uh, composer install, optionally bun bundler install to pull in any uh, dependencies you have uh, from those systems, running code validation, running drush make, doing the scaffolding to inject your custom files into the build output, and doing any uh, theme compilation you have, like compiling SAS to CSS. And I'll just note that not all of these steps are run every time you run Grunt. It's run when it's uh, applicable or needed. So every time you run Grunt, it's not going to do a full Drush Make. It'll only run Drush Make if it sees that your Make file is uh, has been updated more recently than, than the build output. So it tries to be smart about what to do. And so here's just an example of the output from running Grunt. We'll see it start and uh, run Composer install. 
and you know, some of the things you'll see pulling in here are uh, dependencies for Vahat. Uh, it will run Drush Mink and pull in Drupal Core and also any contrib uh, modules or themes you've defined. And then it does the scaffolding task to um, integrate your custom code with the build output. So if we look again at that project uh, directory after running Grunt, we'll see a couple things have been added here. Uh, most notably, the build directory, which um, includes a couple directories, and I'm going to focus on the HTML directory inside of that, which if you look inside of that, you'll see something that looks like a, a common Drupal doc root, um, essentially what you'd get by downloading core and extracting it. Um, and I'll return to that in just a minute, but I want to also point out there's a vendor directory which includes uh, some of those project dependencies um, that would be pulled in from the Composer JSON. And that includes uh, the hat com uh, Composer, which is actually pulled in by a gem file, um, and uh, other supporting tools. So if we look back at the build HTML directory, again, this is uh, you know, basically a, a Drupal core checkout. Um, but if we look into the directories, you'll start to see things that have been pulled in by Drushmake or, um, and or by the, the scaffold task. So if you look in modules, you'll see a, co a contrib directory, which includes devel, which was pulled in by Drushmake. But the custom directory here is actually a sim link back to the project um, directory's source modules uh, directory. Similarly, if we look in profiles, we'll see a sim link of any install profiles that you included um, from here in the Drupal doc root back into your source uh, profiles directory. Likewise, the sites directory has a sim link from default back to source sites default. And some files in here may be pulled in uh, from source sites. So you could uh, drop in a sites.php file into source sites and that'll be pulled in here. Um, and then finally, themes. Again, uh, like modules, you'll find a contrib directory that has anything pulled in by Drush Make and uh, a sim link for, from custom back to source themes. And this might uh, you know, strike you as uh, odd or interesting that we're using sim links here. Um, the real advantage is that you don't need to rebuild after every change you make to a source file. So if you're working on a, a module under source modules, um, as you're working on that, all those changes are, are transparently included in your Drupal doc root. So um, yeah, you don't need to go through kind of a big uh, rebuild of the system as you're doing uh, just code changes. The um, sim links are set up by the grunt Drupal task build task. So you can be assured that they're set up correctly. This isn't a manual task you have to do. And the links are um, relative within this project scaffold, which means you can copy that whole project to another machine, um, whether it's you know a VM locally or uh, a server, and those links will continue to work because they are relative within that structure, so they're portable. Uh, tools like Xdebug can work across the sim links. So you could be tracing and stepping through code that's in core contrib, and uh, you know then see it kind of jump over into a custom source file. Um, it, it's not an issue for Xdebug or IDEs. The one caveat, though, is for Windows users. Um, sim links are not as well supported there, um, and so kind of the two uh, options that. Uh, we know of right now are you know doing development on a Windows machine in a virtual machine that's you know Linux powered, um, or we're uh, also thinking about implementing an alternative to the symlink approach, which would be copying files into the uh, doc root. That you know eliminates kind of the advantage of the symlink, so um, that's not something we want to do by default. But um, for those who are uh, developing on Windows systems, that's um, probably a, a kind of key way to move. So one other thing I'll point out as part of the build process that we get by using Grunt, um, and this is similar to kind of Compass Watch, um, is you can have it run things automatically when file changes are detected. So um, you can run Grunt Watch, and that will run the uh, uh, 
typical build tasks when it sees files being updated. So just to show that, um, if you run grunt watch, you'll see it immediately say it's waiting. If you change a file, like a module file, it'll pick that change up and then run the tasks uh, configured. And so here we see um, giving you some code quality output um, and then it returns uh, to kind of a state of watching now for the next change. So this build process is really the core of uh, Grunt Drupal tasks. We see it as capturing the kind of typical steps in a daily development workflow. And the purpose of it, again, is to produce a complete Drupal site doc root from custom source files and a make file. And this is a process that you know we assume you're doing locally. You're you know building on your local machine and also doing that build process on your integration system. So you're not having to um, commit the build output into your source repository. Instead, you're counting on that being uh, regenerated through the build process, uh, you know, on your different environments. That said, you can. Um, break down the build process and run some of these build tasks individually. So I'm going to look at and, and kind of walk through some of these core tasks. The first, again, is um, validating code quality. And again, this is using lints and static code analysis to try to quantify uh, code quality. And right now, um, this is running PHP lint and PHP code sniffer uh, with Drupal's coding standards. And you can run this by running grunt validate. PHP lint is just a basic way of verifying the syntax uh, with a built-in uh, lint tool to PHP. And so this will catch just basic parse errors, things that if you tried to you know, go in the web browser and check out the Drupal site, you'd probably have a white screen of death um, if you had you know, issues like syntax errors. Um, it's nice to be able to just get this feedback immediately on the console before you know, having to move into um, a web browser or some other place to test it. Additionally, PHP Code Sniffer um, verifies code style according to Drupal's code standards. So very much like the code or review module, um, this is giving you feedback about uh, white space issues, comment issues, um, other kind of Drupalisms. And again, it's nice to have this output um, just through a simple, quick tool rather than uh, having to go into you know UI or, or web perspective to get that. And so having these tools um, accessible through Grunt Drupal tasks, I think, um, really helps encourage developers to validate code before committing. Um, and that means that peer code review that you d might do through like a pull request system can focus on architectural issues or higher level issues, and you're not distracted by you know code style or other um, uh, issues that probably could be caught you know, in more simple ways. Uh, this can also let you do kind of more advanced steps, like having um, integration builds automatically fail at certain levels of, uh, you know, if there are certain numbers of code style issues, um, you could reject pull requests automatically if it has you know, X number of uh, code style issues to try to really enforce um, certain uh, expectations around uh, code style. So another major task um, provided by Grunt Drupal tasks is theme compilation. And um, you know, I think it's interesting to note that uh, we have been using non-PHP tools in Drupal development for um, a while now. I think Compass was one of the first ones that um, I was aware of, kind of brought into um, Drupal practice. Um, and so you know, this was definitely a goal to uh, support Compass and uh, theme compilation as part of the Grunt Drupal task build process. So we allow you to configure um, Grunt Drupal tasks to define the themes you have, and then what uh, approach um, should be used to kind of compile those theme assets. And this task, again, can be run individually with Grunt compile theme. The, the one approach we have supported right now is with Compass. And um, if you include a gem file in your project repo, Grunt Drupal Tasks will install Compass for you and any of the required gems um, uh, to support that. 
and then Compass Compile is run as part of the build process. And again, it can also be run individually um, through Grunt with this compile theme uh, task. And the output you'd see there is pretty similar to running uh, Compass Compile directly. This, though, could be configured to uh, run, you know, compile several themes if, if your site has several themes. Um, so it, it has some advantages to that layer of abstraction. Um, I, I, a feature that is it's currently in pull requests and we're um, eager to merge it um, in the near future is allowing Grunt Drupal tasks to delegate theme compilation to themes that are powered by Grunt. So this is something I think um, we'll start to see more of that a theme will actually supply its own Grunt file uh, to do certain automation for it, which could be uh, minification of CSS and uh, JS. It could be doing the SAS to CSS uh, compilation. It could be um, uh, generating sprites from individual icons. So I think this is going to be uh, kind of a growing um, space, and uh, we're excited to um, you know, provide uh, the functionality to support that. The kind of last major piece of um, you know, building and testing is, is testing, and uh, specifically testing site features. And um, so currently the, the test suite that we're um, supporting is Behat, which is somewhat of a, the de facto um, Drupal uh, uh, test suite for testing functionality. Um, Grunt Drupal tasks uh, out of the box will um, pull in Behat, the Drupal extension for Behat, and some of the other dependencies like Mink. Um, but one note is that testing with Behat expects um, not only a Drupal code base, but an installed Drupal site, and also one that's accessible by URL. So um, I just want to speak quickly about uh, two options uh, for running tests locally. Um, of course, you can set up a local environment, which might be a VM or using Docker or something like MAMP on your host machine. Um, but Another interesting one for doing kind of quick and simple tests is uh, using PHP's built-in web server. And we've uh, implemented this in uh, Grunt Drupal tasks. Um, and actually, whenever uh, new code is added to Grunt Drupal tasks, we have um, Travis CI set up to run through these tests. So it's actually on Travis uh, spinning up a Drupal site, installing it, running it uh, using this system, and then running some tests against it. And that helps us verify that as we're changing and enhancing Grunt Drupal tasks, we're still um, uh, providing that core functionality. So just to kind of walk through um, using this, if you run Grunt Drush Light Install, um, it creates uh, a SQLite uh, database file, installs Drupal into it, and, and it lets you know, you know you've got um, installation is complete, and here's the admin username and password. Another command, grunt drush run server, um, and both of these are essentially just lightweight wrappers around a drush command. Um, invokes drush uh, to use PHP's built-in uh, server, and once it, it lets you know that it's listening and ready, uh, you can go over into a web browser and um, hit your local uh, Drupal site. And so that then lets us get Drupal running locally in a, a pretty simple and lightweight way. And um, that then lets us use Behat tests against it. And so now we can run a uh, grunt test. And this is going to kick off Behat and show you the output. And this is going to be very similar to output directly from Behat, where you'll see it um, stepping through the scenarios uh, that you've defined you know, walking through the steps, and then finally reporting, um, you know, it, it uh, found three scenarios, three of them passed. So that's great. Our tests are passing. So Grunt Drupal Tasks is um, trying to uh, kind of encourage us a little bit to move towards uh, BDD, behavior-driven development or test-driven development. And um, it's meant to support that type of a workflow where you're first writing tests and then you're iteratively writing code to try to pass, um, you know, complete a feature that passes those tests. And you can automate this whole process using Watch, where um, 
again, you can start the watch up, write tests, you know, you'll probably see those tests fail initially, then go write code and kind of have a feedback cycle of, of writing code, seeing the feedback of those tests, um, and then continuing to write code and, and essentially writing code until all your tests pass, at which point you know your feature is, is done and working. And so, um, you know, in support of this, Grunt Drupal Tasks um, bundles uh, some of those tools, and it also includes um, a couple demo mm -hmm. example test scripts, um, which will run against a um, vanilla install of Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 um, to help you kickstart testing. Because we think that if, if you have the tool set up, you're able to see that, you know, uh, basic tests can pass against them. That'll uh, lower the barrier of then writing your first test against you know custom code that you're working on. So this is kind of edging us. You know, th it's walking us through the development cycle and um, kind of you know at the end of that, the the elephant in the room is how do you get that up on a server? How do you push it out and deploy it? And um, we really see Grunt Drupal tasks and this project scaffolding as being primarily meant for local and you know development and integration environments. I'm not going to suggest that you know you have that kind of symlink structure up on a live production system. Not that anything would be particularly wrong with that, but um, it, it's much more uh, suited for local development. So Grunt Drupal tasks is about um, it's focused on preparing code for release and then handing that code off to other tools to actually perform the deployment. But um, there are a couple ways that Grunt Drupal Tasks can help with this. Um, one is uh, what we call packaging, which really just means producing a standalone deployable Dr Drupal doc root. Um, and that means primarily uh, kind of stripping out some of those supporting tools and configuration. You don't necessarily want to push uh, you know, the hat and composer up to your production box. You probably just want that uh, Drupal doc root. Um, it will also dereference the symlink, so essentially copy the files, the custom files, into place into the doc root. So you'll have just a simple um, uh, Drupal doc root, what you're um, already used to working with. And you can uh, build this just by running grunt package, which uh, kicks off, um, you know, generating our tarball and then compressing that. Um, and so you wind up just with a, um, a zip tarball of your uh, build output. We are exploring a couple other ways that Grunt Drupal Tasks can support the release process. Um, we have two approaches in mind. One um, is, uh, and this kind of falls within the model of um, Acquia and Pantheon's hosting environments where they expect that your release code is going to be in a Git repository, um, but they do expect a certain structure, which is you know somewhat stripped down. They wouldn't want to see all these uh, you know supporting tools there. So on a couple client projects that we've done using Acquia and Pantheon, um, we've done some project specific scripts to um, pull your uh, kind of packaged code out of the project repository and push it into another repository. Um, and, and have that prepared for uh, deployment. And this is something that we'd like to uh, pull back upstream into Grunt Drupal Tasks because I think it would be useful uh, uh, for others and, you know, frankly, we'd like to have it um, as a more general function for future projects ourselves. And I think there's also room to look at integrating with other tools that really specialize in release and deployment um, like Capistrano or ShipIt. So um, that's taken us through the kind of tasks and, and functionality that you get out of the box with Grunt Drupal tasks. Those are really the core functions and what we think um, you know, works for uh, the vast majority of projects. But like I mentioned, we do want to support um, you know, variations and in, in using Grunt Drupal tasks in different ways. And so uh, I'd like to just talk quickly about configuring and extending this. Um, Configuring, uh, by that we mean, um, you know, changing settings that we've decided to expose in gruntconfig.json. Um, so again, this is a JSON file that um, has different settings that Grunt Drupal Tasks uses and allows you to modify uh, what it's uh, uh, 
expecting. So a couple of the settings you can change are the source and build paths. So I talked to, you know, um, there, there are assumptions about that project scaffold, but you can uh, tweak exactly how that's set up. You can change some of the uh, command line options that are sent to Bahat. Um, so you can, uh, you know, for your project, if you have a certain, say, tags that you want um, run in Bahat, you could put that in your grunt config JSON file. You could add uh, custom arguments to Drush Make if that's needed for your process. Um, again, there's options about how you're compiling your theme and also what files to include or exclude from the package script. And so just a quick example of uh, configuration. Let's say you want to add the working copy flag uh, to Drush Make whenever that runs. Um, this is just a, a, a quick image of uh, showing the uh, grunt config JSON file with some arguments added to the Drush Make process. And additionally, if you want to get deeper into changing how Grunt Drupal Task works, um, you can extend it. And these extensions mean that you're uh, altering your project's uh, specific Grunt file and um, you know, changing the, the tasks that are defined. And this allows you to add new tasks, replace existing ones. Um, you could uh, have a shell script maybe um, uh, that you want to be run as part of the default build process and you could add that to Grunt Drupal tasks uh, through these extensions. You can also override the default uh, steps in the build process uh, to tweak it as you needed. So for example, um, let's say you wanted to add another Grunt plugin, uh, say the ESLint plugin for doing JavaScript linting. It just takes a couple lines of code um, to load that uh, Grunt plugin, configure it to uh, lint the JavaScript you want, and then uh, add that to the default build process. So to wrap up, um, I hope this has been uh, informative and interesting. Um, you know, I think that I'd love it if you're uh, interested in trying uh, Grunt Drupal tasks on your next project. Um, you know, again, checking out the gadget generator for setting up a new project with Grunt Drupal tasks. Um, and then, you know, using Grunt Drupal tasks in your daily uh, development workflow, you know, building and uh, sharing this with others on your team. Um, if you have ideas on how uh, this could work better, please file some issues um, in the GitHub repo. And patches are always welcome. Uh, since we've been talking about this, we've you know been getting contributions from the community, and that's awesome. Um, and I you know uh, love to see more people pitching in on this project. And um, we've also labeled some tasks or issues on GitHub as help wanted. And we see these as good um, tasks to kind of get your feet wet and step in um, and help out the project. So take a look uh, for those on the uh, GitHub issue queue. And uh, just to give you an idea of some of the things that we're planning uh, for future development, we'd like to support more quality and testing tools. And that could be SAS or JS linting. Um, it could be adding support for PHP unit, especially for Drupal 8. Um, as I mentioned before, allowing delegation to grunt-powered themes for doing theme compilation. Adding more options for uh, releasing and deployment. Um, there's some interesting discussions around using Composer for building Drupal instead of DrushMake, and that's something that we would like to move uh, quickly to support. Um, I'm also really interested in uh, Drupal Console, um, which I think can offer some ways to automate common development practices, and I think it's a, a no-brainer to um, introduce that into the Grunt Drupal task uh, universe. And then finally, adding more options and prompts to Gadget to let you configure and choose um, and specify more of the preferences you have about how you want to set up your Drupal project. So thanks very much for coming. Um, I'm going to get uh, the slides for the session up on my, uh, the, the session page on uh, the DrupalCon LA site. Um, here's just a quick link for, um, for reference. It would be great if you could evaluate the session. Uh, check out the slides there. I'll also put up links to uh, the different projects and, and resources I mentioned. So thanks very much, and I'm happy to take any questions you have.
I have a question. Um, if you have an existing project, is this something that you shouldn't do and this should be only for new projects pretty much? Um, it's easiest to do with new projects, but I have uh, tried kind of converting old projects into it, and um, it's, uh, it's definitely doable. Um, and it's easy to confirm whether you've done it successfully because you can kind of uh, configure a project along these lines, put your custom code in, run build, and then compare that build output with what you currently have. So it's not impossible, but just kind of difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's um, you probably would want to have a reason for doing it. I mean, if you want to, um, if if this makes sense as a way to tie some of those tools together for you, um, you know, it might be worth that kind of one-time effort to um, pull your current project into this. Thank you. Yeah. Now, this is with regard to the uh, the sim links for Windows development. Is there a reason why not to use the Windows sim link for it? Um, I'd be curious to hear more about that. I I have heard um, there might be issues with sim linking directories. Um, so if you have more information about how to implement that, um, you know that'd be an awesome contribution. Okay. Okay, first off, kudos. It's an absolutely amazing thing. It's uh, We have something internally in our group that's very similar, but not nearly as standardized and uh, not pushed out for everyone in the world to share in. Uh, but one thing we do that I'm wondering if this would work with is all of our custom projects have their own Git repos. Um, is there an easy way to integrate that into this workflow? Um, could you say more about the... Well, uh, rather than having a single repo that's uh, all of our themes and module, all of our custom themes and modules are in, each of our custom themes and modules has its own repo. Sure. And we're currently using Drush to bring those in as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, an option. And, um, yeah, there's definitely a balance of whether you want to have all those custom modules mm -hmm. living in their own repo or in a common one. Um, you know, th this approach is um, uh, e would work equally for either. Um, you know, the, the approach of using Drush Make to pull in those custom modules from Git repositories, um, you know, makes sense in this workflow. Okay, cool. Yep. Thanks. I was wondering if you compared Grunt to other older tools like Thing, for example. Thing? Uh, yeah, you know Thing? Yep, yeah. Uh, why Grunt was chosen? I mean, the main advantage of that. Yeah. Um, so we actually had a, a build uh, a tool uh, using Thing before Grunt. Um, I mean, I think, so one advantage to Thing is that it is based in PHP, um, so it's you know a little more in our community. Um, but uh, and and it can work for some of the the basic file uh, manipulation and kicking off other tools. Um, it doesn't have the same library of, of plugins that Grunt has. So you know it doesn't have the plugins for doing uh, JavaScript minification and CSS. I don't think it's um, you know it doesn't have all those tools and it doesn't have the same kind of momentum that Grunt has behind it. So um, we chose Grunt to yeah because. You know, it is widely adopted and, and has a lot of momentum right now. Um, so, you know, we felt like it was a better, uh, you know, option for the long term at this point. And second part is you use Grunt to do your local code analysis and verification as well. Most of our developers prefer to do that from within their IDE. So when they save a file, for example, uh, code sniffer is run, linting is done, and they get the feedback right away. Did you also consider that option or use that as well? Um... What is it actually running the lint in that case? I think it's just configuration. It, most of them use PHP Storm. Okay. So it's just configuration within PHP Storm. You say these tools have to be run on each save for that type of file. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly. I haven't configured it. Need to document it better. But it's something like that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people use, um, say, the watch task. Uh, sometimes even like within an IDE, if you have kind of a shell, um, you know. Uh, window within your ID, you could use the watch task there and, and be getting the feedback from Grunt. Um, I mean, I think the advantage to using Grunt over something like PHP Storm is just that, um, you know, you, you don't have that extra overhead. 
Grunt can be run on the integration server where you probably can't, you know, you're not going to run PHP Storm and it's linting on, on your integration server. So it's uh, just a little more portable. Okay, the portability, but the one advantage they mentioned is the fact that it shows the exact line where the error is shown within PHP Storm and you can jump to it automatically as well, for example. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, when you're using Grunt and it's downloading assets like Drupal or the contract modules, does it cache those locally so it doesn't re-download them every time you run build? Yeah. Um, so uh, the the dependencies for Grunt, which are like node dependencies, uh, npm does some caching of those. Um, Drush Make, I believe, does some caching of. Drupal core and contrib, but it's not always as aggressive as I want it to be. <laughs> um, so that's one of the reasons that we're not running Drush Make on every run of Grunt. We only run it when we see that the make file has been updated, um, because you know downloading core and all of your contrib um, can take a while. And so just to keep the process, you know, quicker, um, yeah, we try to do that only when it's necessary. Oh, okay, because I've I've run into similar build time issues. Doing building from a make file, I thought there may be some magic to cache that stuff locally. Right, not sure. Yeah. In my experience, uh, Git does not follow sim symlinks. So, if we're gonna put the repo in the SRC folder, how about those modules that are sitting in the project root? And you said Pantheon and all those guys don't accept the whole build tree, you know, as a part of the repo. So, how do we overcome that with two repos or? What Right, yeah, so with the kind of say Pantheon model, um, yeah, so far we have used two repos. So we have a repo for um, the project, which again just has your tools and your source, uh, custom source code, and then a repo for the fully built product, which is deployable. Um, and, you know, there's some, t uh, some disadvantage to having two repos, but um, it, it does work cleanly and um, you know, there, there's a clear purpose for both of them. Thank you. Cool, thanks. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm happy to, yeah, take any other questions up here. Thanks. <laughs>